Hi guys, this is Cash and I'm checking in with you from Frankfurt, Germany with Ignite Thermogenic Fat Burner. This is my little secret to keeping lean and having good energy throughout my busy days while I travel. So I want you guys to be sure to check out Ignite, especially if you're trying to get yourself in shape for this summer. Oh, Ignite is gonna get you into bikini body shape. You know, I gotta show you guys a bit of what's going on. Ignite is gonna help you get the results that you want. You're gonna love this product. I certainly do. So I'll put the link down below for the website. Be sure to check them out on Instagram and use my promo code to get great discounts. Check in with you guys soon. Greg Valentino, what's going on guys? Listen, Chaos Nutrition presents this show. So we want to support Chaos Nutrition. Alright? Go to chaosnutrition.com. Don't mind my voice. Blah, blah, blah. I still talking fucked up. I'm actually in my garage. That's not a coffin. That's a tanning bed. Okay. And I, yes, I tan. And right now we're doing some work here, so there's a lot of shit going around in the background. It's my daughter's bike. My daughter's an MMA fighter. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to start in here today is because I wanted to show you a few things, okay? Again, wait, let me get back. Chaos Nutrition, chaosnutrition.com. Big Frank is there. Big Frank is fucking made Rich Piano look like a pee. And Big Frank was one of the original guys with Rich Piano, 5% nutrition. But the, the Chaos Nutrition guys, they started with... Rich Piana, and we're with Rich Piana, even when it was nutri mutant nutrition, or whatever it was, mutant supplements, whatever the fuck that shit was, and then 5% nutrition, so Chaos Nutrition is the new guys, they're the ones who are starting a new thing, so chaosnutrition.com. As soon as I get a little bit more info, I don't even know all the products they sell, but I'm just telling you, Chaos Nutrition store, I'm, they're, they're doing uh, the wrong thing. The throat is still very fucked up, don't mind me. Right here, this bar, right here. This bar is older than most of you guys. I got this in like 1978. I got it from Matt Ferrigno. They don't sell bars like this anymore. This is old school. Old school. Look at this. Look at this. Hold on. I'm going to hold it up. Look at, look, at the, look at this. You see this? The cable goes through. You push it down. Look. With your hands. Look at this. This is, you know how old this shit is? It's 40 fucking years old at least. Look. They used to have this in Gold's Gym in California. Push with your palms. Take up more hand space by pushing. This is old school. Whoa. These are Ferrigno dumbbells. Look at that. See, it says Ferrigno right there. I don't know if you can see that. Ferrigno. Okay? These are original Ferrigno dumbbells. Um, they used to, like when he first came out with them, they were green. Because of the Hulk. Of course, that caused so much trouble. A little bit. Anyway. Made a black plate welded. See the plate? This is plate welded. They rotate. Here's the the heavy knurled, the heavy knurled handles. I got the whole rack here, but I'm just showing you light ones because I ain't lifting up all the heavy ones. This Ferrigno, baby. They don't make the yes, they make stuff similar to this, but not like this, bro. Look at this is a galvanized steel. This shit is so heavily knurled, and you pull it down. This is this right here. It's pretty much how I built my lats. Now hold on. I want to show you something. Stay here. Right here, baby. Ferrigno. Wait. Do I have it upside down? I have it upside down. Here we go. Ferrigno. Right here. Okay? This was given to me by Matt Ferrigno. Actually, I bought this, but he gave me these bars and all that other He gave them to me for free. Okay? Matt and Andy Ferrigno ran this company. Right here. These are the original bumper plates. Nobody had bumper plates. These are from the 70s, bro. No, excuse me. 
81, 82, something like that, maybe. I think I got them from him. From Matt Ferrigno. Okay? And Andy Ferrigno. So, you know, I have a history with the Ferrignos. I got a lot of stuff here from the Ferrignos. There's more stuff back there, but I'm going to have my cameraman who spritz the little spray paint on my fucking lawnmower. I'm, I have my camera person uh, here, so I got to get this done. But anyway, right here, Matt Ferrigno, Andy Ferrigno. They were my boys. So when I say the shit about me and Lou Ferrigno, we kind of have a history. And it has to do with the family. That's He doesn't realize that. But anyway, so I love these plates. I'll never get rid of this shit. These are the best bars. Bro, this fucking, this V bar. Dude, they don't make this shit. Bro, this is a fucking V bar, bro. To you guys, maybe just nothing. But I've had that bar. Since 1979-78. Same thing with the dumbbells. The dumbbells rotate. I like that. Heavy knurled. Real heavy knurled. I like that. Even the sleeve. Look. Even the sleeve rotates. Right in there. Alright. Alright. So anyway. We're going to get busy now. But I just wanted to say. Rest in peace my Ferrigno. Thank you. For the good shit you gave me. I still use it to this day. Andy Ferrigno. I have much love and respect for you. Lou Ferrigno. I'm not going to say another word. Anyway. Alright. Let's get busy. Alright. So we're going to get busy right now. And I just wanted to say again. One more time. Uh, God rest uh, Matt Ferrigno's soul. He was a good guy. You know. He, he hooked me up with some good stuff. You know. And it was. You're talking about. A lot of you people weren't even alive back, you know, back then. So, anyway. Oh, Paul DeMeo, right here. We all, we always got to say hello to my boy, Paulie. Paulie. All right, Paul DeMeo. Speaking of Paul DeMeo, there is a question here, I think, about legs. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the throat, bro. Corona. Every time I cough, we make jokes. Corona. I know, it's not funny, right? All right. Um, first question. Tom Tuttle. Tom Tuttle. Okay. That guy's been asking questions in the past. Tom, thank you for your support. Uh, if you could take one steroid, which one would it be? And if you're going to say testosterone, which... Just Esther is best. Okay. Tom, you're right. I'm going to say testosterone. And that's the reason why testosterone therapy... First of all, testosterone is like the mother compound. Or should I say... Let me put this down. The clipboard. Uh, should I say it's the father compound of all anabolic steroids? Okay. You know, obviously, hormones are made from cholesterol, which gets broken. I know, you know, cholesterol's not fat, so don't think like, oh, look, I got all this fucking fat on my stomach. It's cholesterol. By the way, you are a momo. Um, here's the thing, okay? If you could take one steroid, if I was stuck on a desert island, I would want to take testosterone, okay? Because, you know, I know some of you train and, you know, this and that. No, 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 no. They're all derivatives. They fuck with the testosterone molecule, and that's what anabolic steroids are. Okay, that's why they're anabolic. Uh, andro you know, with androgens. Excuse me. Sim it down. I know a few are like, no, that's not true. Sim it down. This is what I'm going to tell you. The best steroid would be testosterone, and it's what we have in us. Okay, we don't have DECA floating through our veins. We don't have trend flowing through our veins. We don't have those steroids, okay? Hormones. Testosterone. It's what makes us us. You could actually get a guy taking nothing but testosterone, and I've seen it a thousand fucking times. Guys who only take testosterone and get jacked, okay? And it can change your life, especially if you're an older. If you're an older guy watching this, and you're teeter-tottering, you're over 40, and you're teeter-tottering about, maybe should I take testosterone? Should I not? And if he's 50, he should be on it. Yes, it'll change your life, okay? You're not going to get jacked on it, okay? And, you, you know, if I'm talking about on a therapeutic version of, you know, therapeutic uh, 
regimen. But you will get, you know, you'll, your build will come out, you will lose a little body fat, you know, you will get more muscular, and it will change your life. Your joints don't seem to hurt anymore. Your brain is better, okay? You, you feel better. The feeling of well-being for an older man on testosterone is amazing. You fuck a piece of God will fucking, you know what I mean? You'll be, you know, I'm telling you. And then you start, uh, you know, fucking releasing hostages, you know, you shake hands with the general, whatever you want to call it, you'll be potent again, you'll feel better, all of a sudden your sex drive starts to go up, you'll be, it's a beautiful thing, testosterone is a beautiful thing, now, you asked me which esters, okay, and I know you're probably not talking about being an older guy, Tom, but you asked me about which ester is better, for me, this is for me, everybody's different, Okay, obviously, it's best to take a, 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 like, if you take a quick-acting, you know, ester, something like propanate, or even testosterone suspension. Ooh, 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 that's a water-based testosterone. A lot of you guys, I don't know if it's around right now or not. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the loop. But this is old-school training right here, bro, and this is what we talk about. T -t -t Dude, some used to call it testosterone aqueous, which means water, okay? Water-based testosterone suspension hits you like a fucking freight train. And I've seen it's like fucking taking Anadrol, bro. But it's toxic, you know, and it's very strong on the fucking liver, blah, 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 blah. And you got to take shots every day. I know guys used to take, to keep their blood levels, they would take it twice a day, you know, in the morning and at night. I have, you have no idea. I have a friend that used to go on natural bodybuilding shows and take that shit, which is not right. But, hey, listen, that's what are you going to do. It's, it's common. Some natural guys do that shit. Now. Here's the thing. I took propanate a lot. And then I would throw in lupicipinate and maybe lentinate. Okay, I would mix it sometimes because you get the beauty of the longer acting testosterone, which would be the antinate. You know what I mean? And some of you people, I call it antinate, some of you people call it adenethate, or whatever you want to say it. Okay, testosterone and antinate kind of like lasts a lot longer. It takes like up to 10, anywhere from 10 to 10, 10 days to 2 weeks. Uh, yeah, to two weeks to really get out of your, you know, till it's, it's life is that long. Not it's half life, it's life, okay? But the, 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 bro, you mix that with a fast-acting testosterone, which in two, three days is fucking, you know, is already ready to shoot again. <laughs> like a propanate. <laughs> I used to use that. Dude, a lot of the stuff I did, I took 2,000 milligrams of propanate a lot. Every fucking three days, you know, every other day, rather, three days a week is what I'm saying. That 200 milligrams. I used to get shit you won't believe, and I used to be able to take that. I also took a lot of sipinate because sometimes you couldn't get the propanate. Sipinate's the faster. I, so the propanate's the fastest. Then comes sipinate, then comes antinate, all right? And if the, the fat, talking about the oil base, the the suspension is the absolute fastest. I mean, it'll get, it'll get in you. Christ almighty, six hours later, you're already like, woo, I feel that shit. The dick gets like, <laughs> You know what I mean? The piece of God. But anyway, so I I would take the testosterone. Yes, and my favorite ester is mine is propanate. It's not suspension, you know, because then you got to do it's a lot of frequent shots. It's too toxic. Uh, and I would mix some propanate with antinate to keep it going. Or sometimes it propanate and sipinate, or sipinate and antinate. You know, because the sipinate's a fat. Sipinate seems to be like five to seven days. Uh, uh, you know, life, uh, intonates usually like anywhere from 7 to 10 to, to, to 2 weeks. Depends on your body. Everybody fucking seems to fucking, uh, you know, assimilate this shit faster than others. You know, for me, propanate was my baby. You know, and then he threw some, some of those cute little ampules and stuff on it. I just couldn't resist. Which is a whole motherfucking little blend. But anyway, so there you go. All right, here we go. So here's the question. I knew I knew there was a light question, and I wrote, I wrote down. I can't see no Steve. Wait, let me get the light here. Steve. Thirty. Eight. No, Steve. Thirty-five. Sorry. Sorry, Steve. Steve, thirty-five wants to know. Do you have to squat? to get big legs. Every time I squat, I hurt my lower back. Is there any alternative that will work just as well as squats? Guys, listen. Go to my fucking leg workout, bro. I, I talk about this shit. 
Go to my channel and go to my leg workout. You'll see. Yes. Fuck squats. Uh, uh, Send me down. I didn't mean fuck squats. Okay. Here's the deal. You don't need to squat. I know these guys. Dude, that's bullshit. You'll never get big legs without squatting. Oh, yeah? Well, my fucking legs are humongous. And I don't fucking squat. Go look at my video. All right? And, uh, 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 and the video was taken before I was on anything, okay? The one video. Well, I wasn't even on fucking hormone replacement therapy. That's me, okay? And right now, I came out of the fucking... I've been, I was in the hospital. I haven't lifted a weight in fucking whatever. I should really show you my legs right now. With no working out. Nothing, okay? And I'm not... A te I have to take a break from the test because there's a fucking... The throat here, you know? Because the test actually, they say, could help uh, with the bleeding. We don't want any bleeding. I had enough of that. Okay, uh, not help meaning make it, you know, make it a little more of a chance of bleeding. Is what my doctor said. So we're going to go by. It's best I take a, t a little time off anyway. Okay, so, and I was only taking 200 milligrams a week of test. And I remember, I'm fucking 60 years old and my fucking test, my, uh, my test levels, my girlfriend's got more tests than I do. It's fucking bad. My mother-in-law's got fucking more tests than any man out there. But anyway. You don't need to squat. See, I, you you must be like me. Now, I don't know what you look like, bro, but my hips are narrow. Dorian Yates didn't like to squat. He squatted on a Smith machine when he did squat. Which, it, you know, to you big guys, or you big jack guys watching this, say, you're a fucking pussy. You don't squat, you're a fucking pussy. That hurts for me to make that voice. But anyway, go tell Dorian Yates that. Right? You guys all love Dorian. He's a mass monster, right? He's fucking junk. He didn't bench and he didn't fucking squat like that. He did in a Smith machine. <laughs> That's got to kill some of you fucking hardcore fucking go big or go home. Go heavier or go home. It's going to kill you. But it's the truth. You don't need to squat. If you, Squat's great. I'm not taking anything away from squat. Listen to me. Squatting is great. If you have the structure for that. Guys who naturally have a little bit of wide hips and wide... Dude, those are great squatters. But if you have really, really narrow hips... And you got to wear a fucking 10-inch thick weight belt and all this other bullshit... You, you probably hurt your back. I used to squat. I used to squat. I used to squat heavy. I couldn't, couldn't do it. Every time... Every five workouts, I throw my back out. We can't... I, you have to wheel me out of the gym. In a wheelbarrow. Okay? Listen to me. The leg press, to me, was great. Even, it, uh, what's his name? Lee Haney. Leg press. Uh, Paulie DeMeo. I mean, he squatted, but he also loved the hack squat. Okay? The thing is, you don't have to squat. Watch my leg routine, and you'll see the exact way to do it. Dude, I'll fucking kick your ass. Cut your rest periods. Don't fucking take ten minutes between sets. Five minutes. That's ridiculous. But, and you gotta put reps in there. Tom Platt's who was a big squatter, used to do 50, 60, 70, even 100 reps in one set. Okay? So, well, they go over there, go home. It's bullshit. All right? I'm telling you. Well, I've seen some of your greatest power lifters. You know, their legs look fat. But they don't look like no bodybuilder's legs. Right? Listen to me. If you got narrow hips, you're going to hurt your... You're definitely going to hurt your lower back. You're not made for squatting. Okay? It's just like... I'm short, but I have long arms, okay? Believe it or not, I'm not, and I have long legs. I don't have that little squatty guy, you know, built, you know? So, uh, 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 for instance, some guys that have shorter limbs and stuff, like a Lee Priest probably was a great bencher, you know what I mean? And it's no diss on Lee. I love Lee. Lee's my favorite. I, I always tell everybody, Lee's the greatest short bodybuilder ever, in my opinion, so relax. But I'm just saying, guys, we have different structures, you know, somebody like him and I, I have broad shoulders, longer arms, longer legs, and then he's got that jacked fucking, you know what I mean? His like he's probably, he could probably squat and fucking grow like a motherfucker, okay? It depends. Guys who have longer legs, guys who have narrow hips are not made for squatting. I'm just telling you now. I would do leg press or something else. Read, watch my leg routine. Do my leg routine. Okay, and again, it's no fucking did. Lee's one of my best friends in all the bodybuilding. I love him dead. So don't don't talk, don't say no shit. Don't no think no bad shit. I'm just saying, we you know, we have different structures. Him and I, certain things he would probably you know grow great with. I would would fucking kill me. I bet she's a good bencher too. You know what I mean? 
he has that type of structure and, and, and legs, he could probably just do just squats and have giant legs. But that's him. His structure is different than yours. Okay? There's a lot of bodybuilders like that who are great fucking squatters, you know? And it doesn't matter your height. I know what some of you guys could say, Larry Wheels. Well, Larry Wheels, i seen Larry, his wheels aren't fucking, you know, his wheels ain't what his fucking upper body is, you know what I mean? It's, you know, his legs, I mean, you know, they could be bigger for a guy his height. He's a big guy, tall guy. But that doesn't mean his structure makes it so that he can squat. My structure, I'm a bad squatter. And if you have trouble, again, go to my fucking video, watch my leg routine. That's the best. Try that shit. Your legs will grow. Trust me. Anybody's legs will grow. It's all about the structure is what I'm trying to say. When I use Larry Wheels, Elite Priest, the guys like that. It's all about the structure of your physique. Your, your tie-ins, the way your hips are, you know, the length of your legs and everything compared to your upper body, your torso. There are some shorter guys who have, sh you know, who have shorter torsos and longer limbs, that would, you know, that would be me. And then you got other guys who have longer torsos and shorter limbs, you know what I mean? Just, just trial and error. If squats aren't working for you, try something else. There's no fucking law that says you have to squat. That's all bullshit. And those are internet fucking momos, Okay? Try. If it's not for you, it worked for Dorian Yates. <laughs> I know you big guys can't stand hearing that. That's bullshit. It's a fact. It's a fact. Go ask Dorian. He didn't like squats. And he didn't like the bench. Didn't. Whenever he did that shit, he did, a, he did a, uh, uh, hacks and everything. And he did a lot of fucking, anytime he did squat, he would use, he, the, he would do it on a Smith machine. And again, to a real hardcore lifter, that's a being a pussy. <laughs> Go tell Dorian that. Next question. Okay, I like this one. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy and what did he do? Remember Arnold in that movie, Kindergarten Cup? So this guy, who's your daddy? <coughs> Corona? No, just kidding. This fucking shit, bro. You have no idea. I, I'm still learning how to swallow. You have no idea. For the longest time, I couldn't swallow. People like, eat ice cream. When I first got the throat thing done, ice cream would burn. Ice cream burn. And it was almost impossible to swallow. You have no fucking clue other than jello and broth for like two months. All right. And my legs are still built. Not even worked out. Um, what's, okay, so who's your daddy wants to know what's the best exercise to thicken your lower chest? Great question. It's funny because I have a friend who never does incline, never does anything. All he did was he would do flat flies and then he would bench. And he had up here, came out, and everything was like this, boom. And he was skinny too. He started out real skinny, so he always had abs and he was one. Bro, he had the thickest chest. Genetics. Whatever he did just seemed to hit the whole pack. Okay, see me, I always had to work for that, because my, my pecs are, I have Arnold type pecs, but they're, they're flatter, like I have long pecs, I don't have those short little, like short man pecs where they're high up like this, thick little high up pecs, no, I have long nice pecs, but they should be thicker, you know, thickness was always my fucking, you know, my goal, um, so what I would do is I felt in a steep decline, fairly steep anyway, like that, I'd say, I would do decline dumbbells, bring them into the armpit, like this, see, by the way, this is Jerry Ward shirt, we're on TV, I would bring it in like this, and I would push it up, bring it in, push it up, like this, you know, I move from wide to narrow, from wide to narrow, but I would, but, but, um, but I'd be doing it from this way, for, so it's, it's decline, I'd be doing that on a decline, i bring the dumbbells into my armpits, and touch them at the top. From dumbbells into my armpits at the decline. Now, I have done decline bench press too. I feel, you know, with the straight bars I'm talking about. Send me down. We, we talked in the old days. Now today, it's not called decline bench press. It's not a bench press. It's a decline barbell press. Okay, thank you. Alright, but in the old days, we called things a lot of different than shit that you guys called today. So, getting back, I did decline bar presses, okay? And... 
I, I liked it. I got really strong. I would go below my nipples. So I wouldn't go to my nipples and up. I would go a little bit below my nipples to really, and then push up and uh, on the same steep incline. And dude, I've done over 500 pounds on that shit for reps. We're talking a long time ago. And uh, I, I, you guys wouldn't even believe me if, if I told you, but I used to do shit like that when I was natural before. And when I weighed 165 pounds, I, I was so strong on that shit. Dude, I want a bench show. You know, I want a bench show. You guys, uh, i show you the... Uh, let me see if I can stick the trophy in here. But anyway. Uh, so, anyway. The decline, I think the dumbbells are the best bet for the lower pecs. I feel like decline, nice, good, steep angle. Not like too flat, but a little, you know, kind of steep. Not like this, but, you know, pretty steep. Pretty steep like that. I feel that that really with the dumbbells, man, and you kind of go out and, 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 and almost level with your nipples. Well, that, oh, bro, that'll hit your fucking lower pecs, bro. I mean, that that got my lower pecs up, you know, when I won shows. And the, my pecs were beautiful. I'm just telling you, okay? That That's the best exercise, I feel. I used to also feel it in dips a little bit, but I would dip real deep and not go, you know, I didn't really go all the way up when I dipped. I like to do, you know, partial reps and stuff. But uh, that's really stretches the pecs. You know, it's not it doesn't hit everybody there. But I, it, a little bit you'll feel it there. But nothing like decline. There's nothing like decline dumbbell. Like the de decline dumbbell pressure. Uh, decline dumbbell flies. You could fly decline. But it's, ah, you got to get more up in here. And it fucking starts hitting the front, don't you? Decline dumbbell. That's your best bet. That's my favorite. And that's, it worked for me. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't born with, like, thick, heavy, lower pecs. You know, I was born with good pecs structure, but not good thick pecs. So, yeah, especially lower. That's how you, that's the best way I built them like that. Gabish? All right. Next question. All right. SLV79. No, 1079. Oh, I thought it said 97. Whatever. SLV1079, I tried your, I gotta look in the light here, so there's a light right there, I think you can see it, ah, I can't even move the thing, um, I tried your 5 to 10 second rest periods for my biceps and triceps, and it totally killed my arms, I love it, I did not add any extra sets or weight yet, my arms were on fire, and they pumped up nice. How can this be? How can this be? Wait a minute. SLV 1079. You're not, like, complaining that you got, like, a fucking great pump and shit from doing the workout, right? Are you? How can this be? Listen to me. I'm really 100%... Not sure what you're fucking talking about. All right, 10 seconds rest. Man. Okay, so this is, uh, let me answer this question the way I think you're asking me. So you're saying here that you did the ten, 5 to 10 seconds rest for your biceps and triceps, and it totally blew up my arms. To no, it says totally killed my arms. I loved it, and I did not do any extra sets or weight. How can this be? Okay, I think what you're saying to me is you didn't add weight, and you cut your rest periods... And you didn't add sets. Right? Yeah. How can this be? So, uh, alright, listen to me. You don't have to lift heavy fucking weights. Especially with arms and stuff. Okay? The he listen, you're going to lift heavy. I know, I, I know some of you fucking guys don't like hearing this shit. But if you're going to lift heavy, you got to do it heavy in the basic exercises. Shit like squats uh, or legs. Whatever you decide to do, leg press, whatever the fuck is going to be, you know, you got to move some weight, okay? I like to move weight for reps with that legs, because you walk on your legs in a predominantly red fiber. And, um, you know, shit like, you know, the heavy basic exercise, deadlift, benching, shit like that should be done more with the weight. And you can take a little bit more rest between sets, because you're doing, you know, because that those are heavy fucking exercise. And you could do press behind and that kind of heavy too if you want. You've got to be careful with that because it's a great way to get injured. Uh, but when you're doing biceps and triceps, you don't need you don't need heavy weight. 
you need to make the muscle do the work, okay? Uh, you know, cutting the rest periods is adding intensity. That's an intensity that most people don't realize. It's an intensity. You're adding a wicked, wicked intensity when you cut the reps, uh, cut the rest. Do you understand that? So, I could take a guy, and if he does, you know, 15 sets for his fucking biceps and 15 sets for his triceps, I can make that 15 sets literally kill you. Do you understand what I'm saying? That you would normally do and say, ah, you know, it's, you get a pump sometimes. I'll make it so you can't not get a pump. And a way to do that is I'll give you five seconds rest between sets to seven seconds rest to maybe ten seconds. It depends on the person. I could do five seconds. I count one, two, three. I count, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'll go again. Okay? Listen to me. Cutting your rest periods is a great way to add intensity. You can't always add weight. Because then you start sacrificing the movement. And form and function is everything. Okay? If you're just going to cheat curl or bounce curl or, or fucking use some heavy dumbbell that you have no business curling and you can't curl it clean, then there's no reason to go that heavy, bro. There's no reason to go that heavy. When you see these bodybuilders, Lee Haney was in my gym. He was using 30, 35 pound dumbbells. And he was doing concentration curls with that. And he was 275, 280. This is in his prime in 1987. He was in my gym at my house. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. He didn't have to fucking push. And who's going to fucking argue with Lee Haney? There you go. Okay? Now, I know what you're going to say. What about Ronnie Coleman? Ronnie Coleman lifted heavy weights for reps. So if Ronnie Coleman T-bar rode 400 pounds and he got 12 reps with that, guess what? For you, that's heavy. For Ronnie, that's not heavy. He got 12 reps with it. Okay, so he's actually using a working weight. It just happens to be that he, his structure, his muscle fibers, his tie-ins, his tendons, his ligaments, all of that were different than yours. So therefore, he could get away with that. That's why there's a guy in the gym who you say maybe curls like 70 fucking pound dumbbells and you'll see him do reps with that and they're clean and all that. I have guys that I know to do that shit. But that's because they're genetically structured for that. That's the average. Arnold didn't do that. Arnold couldn't bench. I, you know, I probably could fucking have outbenched Arnold. I mean, I was a good bencher. Franco Colombo used to kill him on a bench. Yet Franco weighed 180 something pounds. You know what I mean? At the most. And he would slay Arnold on a bench. Arnold was a bigger man, had longer arms, but he wasn't. That wasn't his thing. Everybody's structure is different. Yet his chest, uh, I think Arnold had one of the greatest chests I ever saw. It was beautiful. It was thick, long, full, wide, pecs, beautiful body. Okay? Everybody's body's different. It, it, you can't always add weight, but you can cut the rest periods. Cut your rest periods. Watch. Uh, I'm not trying to pump up my chest, but watch my arm routine because it makes it easier. I explain all that. It's hard to tell you here. In a little rant, but if you watch what I do and watch the way I show you to do it, you know, the, you know, it, it works really well. Let me give you a little arm secret here. What I like to do. Wait, excuse me. <coughs> um, what I like to do. I like to do like for. I've. I've showed this in a video too where I've talked about this before with some of you guys but I think it really works well I would take like let's say if I'm going to do biceps I would go over to the tricep machine right for me I like to do the v-bar right I'll do that just as I'm talking for a warm up I'll actually warm up my biceps by doing triceps and what I'll do is I'll go to the tricep machine uh, the cable machine excuse me and I'll take the v-bar and I'll do literally five to ten sets in less than five minutes time and I do high reps I'll do like 35 reps put it down count to five I'll, I count backwards when I do count to five I have five four three two one bam I go again I do 30 35 reps boom I stop five four three two one the, you know and I make sure they burn all right, I'll do 30 to 35, make sure they burn. By the time I've done five to seven sets, I have done 10, but usually I like to keep it at like five to seven. 
By the time I've done five to seven sets, my triceps are so fucking full and blow up that the minute I start doing biceps, the biceps actually get this wicked bump because the blood is in the arm. I don't know why it works that way. I can't give you the scientific reason why. I don't know. Okay? But I can tell you, it will blow up your biceps. Once you start training the biceps, your biceps will get so full, your whole arm just jumps inside. And that's when I, I'll st and when I do do the biceps, I start out with a lighter thing. I use a machine curl, okay? I don't start off with no barbell curls, none of that bullshit. I start off with a machine curl, and I do the high reps there. The same type of thing I did on a tricep, and I'll warm up at that. I'll do like 10 sets, and I'll do it. With five seconds rest, five to seven seconds, and I'll do that shit, boom, 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 and by the time I'm done, my whole arm is fucking, like, two inches bigger, it's fucking gigundo. And then I'll go into the next exercise, and like that, okay, I'm not here to tell you a whole bicep routine and all that, again, you can watch this shit, you know, you can ask me that question next week, but I'm just saying, I'll do that, now, I know... And I'll do the opposite. I'll do the same thing when if I was going to do triceps. If I was going to do triceps, I would actually... Want, I've told you this before. But some of you guys are new here, so sit me down if you heard this shit. But for by... You know, I'll, I'll stay on a machine curl, and I'll do the bicep curl. All right, I'll, I'll do biceps. I'll do, like, again, 30 and 35 reps. You know, high intensity, low rest periods. I'll do, a, again, five to seven sets on that, and then I'll start my triceps. Watch how that fucking shit works. Your triceps will blow up like a motherfucker. Because then I'll go to the cable machine and I'll do, you know, like that. Just like I told you. And then that's how my triceps start. Sometimes I'll do bench dips like this. You know what I mean? Where you're sitting on a bench. But I do high reps. None of that shit where you put fucking, where you put like 10 fucking plates on your, that's so stupid. When I see guys in the gym doing that shit, I, I want to throw the plates at them. That's so stupid. That exercise is not made to be done like that. It's made to put fire in the triceps and do high reps. That's a volume exercise. Trust me. Go do 30, 40, 50 reps on this strict squeeze all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down where your fucking ass almost touches the floor. Okay, with no weight. Then jump up, wait five seconds, do it again. You ain't no fucking five plates on your fucking lap to try to impress everybody in the gym. Stop doing stupid shit like that. All right. That's it. I'm almost, what did we learn? We learned that if you could, if God stranded me on a desert island, I could take one fucking steroid, it would be testosterone. Or if I could take one steroid now, it would be testosterone. Because it's the father of all fucking, all anabolic steroids. They fuck with the molecules, they change around. But I love, it, it, testosterone is what we have in us. That's what makes us men. Okay, that's what, that's what really, it's a great muscle builder, you know, um, you know, I know what you guys, trend and this, little, but the trend is a, is a bullshit drug, it doesn't really exist, you know that, right, excuse me, wait, I said bullshit drug, some of you are like, what, what, it's a fucking homebrew drug, you can't go to a pharmacy and say, excuse me, do you have any tremble and SLD, they'll be like, uh, no, we don't even know what the fuck that is, okay, so I would take testosterone, so that's what we learned. Okay, and I like the faster esters. Propanate's my favorite, and I throw in a little bit of antony in there. Propanate and antony, because it's longer acting with that quick acting. I love it with propanate and sipanate, even better. All right, uh, so we got that. So what else did we learn really fast here? Uh, oh, you don't have to squat to do get big thighs. You, you know, squat's great exercise, don't get me wrong, but your structure and everything, if you got shorter limbs, short, you know, short arms, shorter legs, and you got a little bit of thick hips or something, man, you could fucking squat all day on that, you'd be a champion, okay? But your structure matters. If not, go to my leg routine, go watch the see on, on the internet, you know, you'll see blah, 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 blah. You could leg press during eight squats on a hack squat. He's, um, on a, excuse me, on a Smith machine during eight. When he does squat, a lot of times he didn't squat, did hack squats, leg press. He, He's proof. You can win the Olympia without that. And he did it. And he was a mass monster. So don't give me any bullshit. Um, what else did we learn? We learned that uh, the, the, the ticking in the lower pecs, nothing better than dumbbell decline, presses in. But you're going in and out. Oh! Oh! I hit my Perrier water. See? I know some of you guys are like, don't you drink root beer or soda? Of course I do. Uh, diet, always. I'm a diabetic, so I gotta watch this shit. But that today I'm drinking Perrier. Cause it's true. <sighs> Forget about it. What else did we learn? We learned okay. 
to, to for you know for, the, the, for, like the for biceps, triceps, and you know a lot of he, 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 most of your exercises really you can get away with low rest periods because low rest periods are always going to add intensity. You don't always have to add weight because then you start sacrificing what you do to form and function and the whole bit of the exercise, and that's important. Okay, you want to put fire in there. Do my little trick, especially with uh, biceps. You could even do it with chest and back. Kind of works with that, believe it or not. Do some back if you're going to do chest. Do some high reps with like the lats. Maybe some, you know, really, you know, good st stretching. Fucking, you know, something really good like a, you know, pull down or something like that. And then do do like seven sets, five seconds rest, and then go right to pec. You know, something to warm up your pecs. And you could do that. You don't have to, but it works great with arms. So that's what we learned. Okay, listen. Like I tell you every week. I'm going to drink some Perry right now. Why? Why? Well, like I tell you every week, okay? You're a Frankenstein monster, and but you're also the Dr. Frankenstein. you got to fucking experiment. Just because um, sometimes this shit or anything I drink wants to come out the old fucking beak here, you know? Because of the throat. The throat, I'm still learning how to swallow, and sometimes it, instead of it's going down, it wants to go up. Because it doesn't want to go down because it's scar tissue shit. Anyway. So, you know, yeah. What the fuck was I saying? Oh, you're the doc. You're, yeah, you're the Dr. Frankenstein and the Frankenstein monster. You, you got to experiment on yourself. Everybody's different, bro. I don't give a shit what the guy in the gym has got 20 fucking 5 inch arms and he's standing there and you see him fucking doing just cable. I There's so many pro bodybuilders, bro. Do you know? They just do the whole fucking arm thing on a cable machine. They're... You'd be shocked with the bullshit I've seen. But, that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Okay? You have to find out what's right for you. Again, I have a friend who had the biggest pecs. He would go on the show to straight it thick all the way from here, all the way down to the bottom of the pec. And all he did was bench press. And once in a while, he would only warm up. He would do two or three sets of flies. They were light, too, like this. Yeah, You know, he would like just pump them out just to get the blood in. And he would just bench press, and that's it. He didn't need to do incline. He didn't need to do decline. He didn't but that that's that's structure, bro. It has to do with his genetics, the whole bit. Everybody's different. Gabish, find out what's right for you. Stop listening to all these guys in the gym. Stop listening to these fucking Momo science guys. It's pro science, you know. Get out of here with that shit, okay? Everybody's different. Everybody's different. You're different. Don't do what Arnold did, because it's probably not going to work for you, okay? Don't do what I did. Don't do what Lee Priest did. I'm giving you advice. I'm not telling you to do what I did. Okay? Everybody's different. Gabish. Alright. Listen, guys. I love you guys, man. I'm still recuperating from all this bullshit. Alright? Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be good to yourself. Be good to your girl. Be good to your significant other. Treat your kids good. Pay your child support. Don't be a fucking deadbeat dad. I hate that shit. No excuse. Be the kid's hero. Right now you may be the zero. Maybe you don't see your kids because she's fucking taking a shot all and living with a new boyfriend or whatever the fuck. But one day, they're going to say, my father paid every fucking month and you spent it on that fucking Joe Mataraz, the budget loop that you're fucking with. And then you're going to be the hero because you did the right thing. Anyway, all right, be good to yourself. No crazy thoughts, no stupid shit like, I suck, I'm no good, you know, this coronavirus shit, I can't take it anymore. It's man up. Remember the fuck you got, father? Ah, be a man. Stop fucking around. Stop fucking around. Grab your fucking gagoots. Shit's going to change. You'll be able to work out again. All right? Be smart when you go back to the gym. Remember, everybody coughs. Guys blow breath in your face when you're fucking spotting them. You know what I mean? You walk in the gym, the old man's over there walking on a treadmill or <laughs> in a fucking salami breath in the gym and shit. <coughs> Corona. Anyway. So, just, but be smart. Be careful when you get back to that gym. Be careful. Alright? Make sure you clean the surfaces, clean your hands. If you're going to pick your nose, make sure you fucking wash your hands first. Don't do a sad touch shit and then go up there and dig up the fucking, you know, dig up the beak. You know what I'm saying? So, alright, that's it.
I'll see you in the next show. Talk your smack. We'll be after this. Stop fucking around. Do the right thing. All right.